In this lesson, we'll take a look at an introduction to what a derivative is. Now, the definition of the derivative, mathematical definition, uh, is as follows. Uh, the derivative of f of x, f of x could be any function whatsoever. The derivative with respect to x is called f prime of x. That's one of the several symbols that can be used to represent a derivative. And it's defined by, and this quantity over here is called the first principles definition of the derivative. Now, in, a previ in previous lessons, we, looked, we took a look at the difference quotient, which was f of a plus h minus f of a over h. And we used it to find average rates of change between two points in the graph. a was the first point, and h is the horizontal distance between them. Now, if you move those two points so that they're so incredibly close, you're actually taking h and letting it get really, really close to 0. And so that's why the instantaneous rate of change is found by taking the limit of this expression as h tends towards 0. As h tends towards 0, the horizontal distance between those two secant points becomes so small that the two points are, are almost the same point. h can't actually equal 0 because if it did, this quantity would actually be undefined because you cannot divide by 0. So it simply says it, we're taking the limit as h tends towards or gets extremely close to 0. So the limit of this difference quotient as h tends towards 0 is the first principles definition of the derivative and you can find, use it to find any instantaneous rates of change. Now if you evaluate the f prime or the derivative at a specific number a that gives the value of the derivative at that point, the instantaneous rate of change at that point. Some other symbols for the derivative are dy dx that's the Leibniz notation named after the mathematician uh, Leibniz, uh, y prime, and there's a couple of others here that you don't see as much, but those are also symbols for the derivative. This really stands for the derivative of f of x. d dx means take the derivative. The capital D also means the same thing, to take the derivative of f of x. And this stands for the derivative of y with respect to x. Now, when it says with respect to x, that's because it's a rate. And a rate is always the comparison of two quantities with different terms. So when you say meters per second, it's with respect to time, because the second is time. Now, two very important derivative values are where the derivative is 0, at, for example, a local minimum point here, or if you had a local maximum point, if you had a, a curve that went like this at a highest point. Notice that the, the tangent line is horizontal at that point, so the derivative will actually be 0. The instantaneous rate of change there is 0. Uh, places where there's a corner or a cusp uh, are also places of special interest in calculus, and they're places where the derivative is undefined. So the derivative does not exist. That's what D and E stands for here, at a corner or a cusp. And the reason for that is because if you try to draw a tangent line there, Let's say coming from the left, the tangent line would look something like this. But if you come from the right instead, the tangent line looks like this. And see, the fact that the tangent lines uh, are not the same coming from either direction, that's why the derivative doesn't exist. If you looked at the uh, example on the left here, if I draw a tangent line just barely to the left of that point and just barely to the right of that point, they're, approaching, they're both approaching horizontal. So that's why the derivative is defined there, and the derivative value is 0. Now in example one on the third page here, we're going to show in a specific example, uh, for example, that the derivative f prime of zero does not exist. And, and this is the function f of x is two times the absolute value of x. Now this is the definition of the derivative here. So I'm trying to find f prime of zero, so I'm putting zero in place of x here, here, or of course is here and here. Now the function, if I want to know what f of 0 plus h is, well here's my function, it's 2 times whatever x is, the absolute value of x that is. So we'll put uh, 0 plus h, or just h, in place of x, so it would be 2 times the absolute value of h. f of 0, we put 0 in place of x, so it would be 2 times the absolute value of 0. Now of course the absolute value of 0 is 0, so this term in the end is actually just 0. So this simplifies to just the limit of 2 absolute value of h over h. Now we're going to take a look at the left and right hand limits of this, this limit to see if the limit exists and, uh, and what it might be. Now we're kind of told up here it doesn't exist, so there's a hint. Now if we look at the left hand limit, as h approaches 0 from the left side, well, remember absolute value means the distance to 0, so absolute values are never negative. 
this, this number inside the absolute value is negative. So when you take the absolute value of a negative, you, it returns a positive. So for example, um, let's say that we look at a number really, really close to zero but negative. So let's say that h was negative 0.001, 1 one-thousandth. When you put that in place of h here, the absolute value of that returns the number positive 0 0.001. But we still have the negative value in the bottom in place of the h. And so when you divide those two quantities, the positive by the negative of the same amount, you get negative 1. And so this is actually just 2 times negative 1 or negative 2. So as you come from the left side, the slope of the tangent is negative 2. Now if you take a look at the right-hand limit, the, we're talking about as h approaches 0 from the positive side. So whatever number you put in place of h here, it's going to be positive as you approach 0 from the right-hand side. So this quantity, even after do you take the absolute value is the same as what's in the denominator. So the absolute value of h divided by h, if h is positive, would turn out to be positive 1, and so 2 times 1 is 2. So the two limits are not the same, so that's why this limit over here does not exist. If you take a look at the graph of the absolute value function, this is what it looks like. It looks like a v. See, on this side, the, the tangent line slope is negative 2, and on this side it's positive 2. The fact that the two limits are not the same is why the limit doesn't exist here. And that was like that example, that corner or cusp on the last page. Uh, and any corner or cusp, the derivative is not defined. Uh, second example, we're asked to find the derivative of uh, this g of x function. It's 3x squared minus 2. And so this is our derivative definition here. Notice I replace, since it's g, with instead of f, it's g prime. And these are g of x plus h and g of x. So when we go to find g of x plus h, we're replacing x up here with x plus h. So it's 3 x plus h squared minus 2. So the first part the g of x plus h is all of that. Notice again, I've just put x plus h in place of x, the, func the x in the function. So 3, x plus h squared minus 2. g of x, well, this is g of x. So when it says minus g of x in the end here, that is the g of x function. Notice that uh, we're subtracting. So that's that subtraction symbol right there. I need to put this in brackets over here because I'm subtracting a two-term polynomial, a binomial. So in order to get the signs right, I'll put it in brackets. So I need to expand this out. I cannot evaluate the limit right now because if I put 0 in place of h, it's undefined because the denominator would be 0. So I expand out the uh, x plus h squared. So when I go to expand out the x plus h squared, remember, when you square x plus h, you're actually just doing this. It's x plus h times another x plus h. So x times x, of course, is x squared. x times h is an xh. And then h times x is another xh. And h times h is h squared. So that simplifies to x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. So that's what x plus h squared is. Now it gets multiplied by 3, so when you multiply it by 3, then that will become 3x squared. When you multiply this by 3, that's where the 6xh comes from. And when you multiply that by 3, that's the 3h squared. And then uh, minus this 2, take the brackets off here, minus 3x squared plus 2. Now notice we have a couple of pairs of like terms. They're, they're not they're like terms, but they're exactly opposite. So 3x squared and negative 3x squared add to 0, as do the uh, negative 2 and 2. So we actually just have these two terms. Notice they have a common factor of h in them, so I can divide out the h. And so if I divide out the h here, the 6xh would become 6x, and the 3h squared become just h. And so we can now evaluate that limit as h tends towards 0. This term becomes negligible, and the derivative is just 6x. So the derivative of 3x squared minus 2 is just 6x. That's the derivative formula.